So yeah, I accidentally deleted this video before it was done uploading to YouTube, and I deleted it on my camera, so I have to do this again. I haven't done a video in a while because I've, I've been wanting to only do a video um, when I'm home alone, so there's no background chatter, and I haven't been home alone in a few weeks. But now I'm home alone today. So maybe me doing this again will make it uh, shorter and more to the point. Anyway. I had a conversation with an anthropology slash philosophy ma student, major, well classmate, in the lunchroom, WSU, anyway. And he had a more Hegelian view of words, and I had a more Wittgensteinian view of words. His view was that the problem with words, especially nouns, is that they can't really describe their, what they're attached to. They don't fit really well. They're, there's something wrong with our words. And how, there's something wrong with the, with the nature of the words. And he, he talked about like how when I think of a, the word wooden chair, I could be thinking of this, like a wooden chair looks like this. But he could be thinking of like a wooden chair that looks different than this one. So when, he, when uh, the word wooden chair is used, we have different mental images. We have different objects in our mind that we're thinking about. Therefore, there's something wrong with our words, and it's difficult to solve the problem. My view is that there's no problem at all. And it's not a problem. Because all that matters, really, when it comes to words, is clarity and whether or not the word follows the rules. So, when it comes to the word wooden chair, it doesn't matter that the word wooden chair conjures up different, you know, might, might conjure up different mental images. What matters is, does the word follow the rules? Am I calling this a wooden chair, or am I calling uh, water a wooden chair? One's correct, one isn't. So all that matters is that the word is being used correctly, that it's following the rules. I mean, I, I take this as far as to say that uh, when a word can have no definite set definition and still be useful so long as it follows the rules. You might be thinking, how can a word be useful at all if it doesn't have a definite definition? I mean, you can't do language if words don't have, if not all the words in the language have a definite definition. Well, let me think, ask you, give you the famous example of the word game. Like, this is a game, Warhammer. This is not a game, right? So we do have rules for what counts as games, so that's what's important, is that we are able to differentiate between an incorrect and a correct use of the word game. That's what's important. Now on to wh why the word game doesn't have a definite definition. Try to give a definite definition of game, and I'll show you how you're either including things in the definition which aren't games, or excluding things in the definitions which are games. So if I say games are something you play, you're including musical instruments. Musical instruments are played, but they are not games. If you say, uh, games are a competition, well, war is a competition, but war is not a game. If you say games are fun, gladiator games are games. Gladiator matches are games, but they're not fun. So games are not always fun. They're not, they're not just things which are played. They're not just things which are competition. You know, and I thought my brother said uh, a game is something that you get points at. But uh, if you get drunk, you get uh, there's a scale that counts how drunk you are. Those are kind of points. That's not a game. The amount of money you make you a year. Money is kind of a point system. But jobs are not. We don't call those games. So the word game has no definition, but it's still useful because we can determine when it is correctly used, when it is not correctly used. And there are some family or resemblances between things which are called games. The family resemblance uh, example is like this. Uh, consider the people in your family, consider people not in your family. People in your family look similar, more similar than people not in your family. But the people in your family do not look identical at all. They do not look identical, but they look very similar. Similar enough to where we can use the word related and it'd be correct. You all look related, even though you do not look identical. You have family resemblances. It's the same thing with the word um, game. 
things which are called games, they don't have an, a definite definition. They don't not ha they don't have something which is identical to all of them, except the word game is something which is applied to them. But they have certain family resemblances. So we can determine the correct and incorrect use of the word game. Now, on to uh, another topic that was brought up during the conversation. This is more of a, he accused me of postmodernism, which kind of got to me, because I was, it wasn't postmodernism. But yeah, anyway, he brought this example. A species which is evolving. This is that species at an early date. This is that species at a later date. Uh, these two creatures from these stages of the evolutionary chain cannot mate. They are too genetically different from each other to be able to mate. The problem is, is that this this creature can mate with ones in these, this part of the chain. These ones can bar date, mate with these parts of the chain, and so on. So. If two creatures are close together on the evolution, this evolutionary chain, they can mate. But if they're on either of these ends, they cannot mate. They're too different. And he's like, how exactly do you name them? Like, of course, we should give the, this, these creatures and these creatures a different name. They should be, have a different name now because they can't mate. And like the definition of a species is something which can't mate. So they can't mate. But these ones in the middle can mate. My view is that uh, we should, in this instance, we should be okay with words which don't, like, very clearly and non-confusedly name things. We should be okay with the, the understanding that these things are close together in the evolutionary sphere. We can't come up with a perfect naming system because things which are close together on the evolutionary chain can make. So, these are your ends. Species B, species A. Here's the middle point. Let's arbitrarily pick a point on this evolutionary chain. Everything after that is species B. Everything before that is species A. Even though these, the areas next to each other can mate and the ones over here can't. We should do this, make, a, make it a convention that we're going to name it like that. It'll be very useful. It'll help us a lot in understanding early species, later species in this chain. And we just have to understand that these two species are very, very close together on the evolutionary chain. Therefore, sometimes they can mate and sometimes they can't, depending on whether or not they're, they're really close to the center point at which we've chosen uh, arbitrarily and through convention where the split-off point is between species A and species B. And it's okay for there to be a gray point at this split-off point. And you might be thinking, well, that's crazy, because if the two species can mate, then they're the same species. That's why we have to add it as part of the convention that these, these species are close together. We've, only, we've created a convention to help us explain things. We created new rules to help us explain that these species have changed. And that there, are, there is a point at which the two species are considered different species but are very similar, similar enough to mate. We just make it a convention. He called me postmodern for that, but anyway, that doesn't matter. I'm, I'm okay, I'm, I'm over that now, but anyway. Oh, I think he may have said it because I also had, I said something about how certainty is not always paramount. Most, a lot of the time what's important is just enough knowledge. Having enough evidence to act on stuff. You don't have to be certain, you just have to know enough to act, because you can never really be certain about most things. Anyway, yeah, that was my point. And also when it comes to these rules, all that really matters with language is clarity and rules, you, you can go ahead and introduce new, new rules, new words, especially if we're dealing with new fields of thinking, where the ideas are confused in the beginning, unclear in the beginning, and become clearer and less confused as more work is done. You can go ahead and introduce new rules and new uh, words, and you can even use words differently to a degree, I think. I think you can take a word and modify it a little bit, give it a new definition, a new rule, so long as you explain that that's what you're doing, and the word that you've modified, you haven't modified a lot. Like, for instance, if you have an idea that doesn't have a word yet, but there's a word that's kind of similar, you can use that kind of similar word and say you're going to use it a different way to fit this idea that doesn't have a word yet. 
I like how Ayn Rand uses the word selfishness and altruism differently than the common rules, the common definitions of those words. It's okay because her ideas are close and didn't really have a word yet, and they're close enough to the, these words over here, selfishness and altruism, to where she could just take those pre-existing words, give them new rules, and say, within our objectivist little sub-society, within a greater society, we're going to use the words differently. That's fine. The problem is, you, it has to be similar. Like, you can't just be like, elephant now means cats. Cats now means rain. Uh, computer now means robots. Robots now, I guess maybe you can with that, but you can't, you can't just go insane. You can't just be like, cheese means moon. Moon means rocks that are on the ground. It has to be, if you're going to alter the rules a little bit, you, you, I think you, you, it'd be incorrect to go nuts with it. You have, there has to be some limits there. Yeah, that's sort of my view of lang this language issue.